In today's RetroTech Repair, we're going to be trying to fix this MB Microvision that I bought spares or repair on eBay. So somebody has written on the box there, our price only £13, that's a, a while ago, presumably. Some kind of staining there, dubious, maybe that's battery damage. And there it is, very dirty, very discoloured, and uh, comes in this kind of very 1970s box here, it's the wrong way around, so let's take a look. Yeah, it comes with a pouch. And instructions, which is nice, the box itself. And uh, that's showing some damage there. Yeah, the game is very dirty. Uh, the screen, mm, really hard to tell. Never had one of these, it's quite discolored. I don't know whether these are retro brightable or not. There's some marks on here, on off switch on the side. Uh, I don't actually know how these come out. Okay, I guess that comes out that way. Uh, I'm sure what that was all about. And the game's cartridge itself. As I say, quite discoloured, but uh, we might be able to brighten that up. We'll try cleaning that up later. I guess they had a touchpad, huh? This looks a bit kind of flaky. It's like it's got some tape or something stuck over the top of it. If that's usual, it doesn't look to be particularly skillfully applied there. It has a kind of smell like it's been in someone's attic or uh, something like that. Let's take a look at the battery compartment. It takes two 9 volt batteries, battery compartment. Mm, looks clean. Uh, it was bought for spares or repair. Let's take a quick look at the eBay listing for this one. So here it is, Microvision the computer game system, uh, 64. I paid £21 plus £4.55 shipping, so £25.55, still quite a lot of money. And the description was pretty straightforward. Description, please contact us if you would like to see more picture. That's basically it, Microvision Computer Game System, please contact us if you would like to see more picture. So it doesn't actually say whether it works or not, I assumed it didn't. Uh, it wasn't sold for parts, it's just sold as used. So let's see. So don't ask me how I came to have so many of these batteries. Um, it was a uh, pound store special, I suppose. Actually, I used them in a different video, and this is one of about five like this that I have. Uh, but I used them in a different video to repair, or actually to discover the value of a part. And I used those in a uh, Astro Wars repair video, which I haven't yet edited and shown you, but which I think is gonna be quite interesting when I do, but you know what? So a lot of interest in my Astro Wars videos, at least compared to some of my other videos, which have only a few views. The Astro Wars maybe hit a thousand views. Uh, there's a lot of interest in it, comparatively for this channel. Um, but um, all the repairs tend to be the same on those games, but I do have a different one. It's a fairly common fault on the Astro Wars, not the most common, uh, but I will edit up that video and that will be coming soon. But in the meantime, uh, let's just try them in. Okay, moment of truth. Let's slide the game in and see what it does. Well, it's done something. I uh, really don't know how to play this, but uh, let's try. One ST, one SD, SF. One. I don't know how you start. Is that the start button? Oh, maybe the start button's missing. Huh. Okay. Try again. Wow, it's, uh, it's pretty hard. Maybe there's a, an easier way. I didn't realise there was a button missing there. That's a bit of a shame. It does seem to be working. Yeah, that's quite good news, huh? Um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to repair a missing button. Uh, but, uh, all right, so let's see how see how we use it then. 
And then I should choose a number of balls. Let's choose a number of balls. One, two, three, five, three, one, five, four. So at this stage, I think it's worth pointing out that in fact I can count, but that not all of the key presses have been registered by our MB Microvision, and some of the key presses have been registered multiple times. I think this is something that's called key bounce. However, shortly things will become a whole lot worse, as you'll see as I try to repair the keypad later in the video. Six screws holding it in place at the back. And then uh, it comes apart very easily, but kind of like it was sprung loaded. There's a lot of stuff in there. Let's get this game cartridge off. Oh, wow, that's uh, I guess is the cartridge slot. Yeah, it's uh, this kind of fell to pieces. A lot more readily than I anticipated. There is our keypad. I guess I'd always assumed that, um, in fact, when you pressed on here, it had uh, it sensed kind of on a more detailed matrix where actually you were pressing, but apparently not. It uh, it just is these. Uh, what is it? Eight locations. One, two, three, four. 12 locations. Piece of electric sounder, just kind of clips in there. Potentiometer for our controller, straight through to the battery tab. Underneath, straight onto the printed circuit assembly. And uh, it's all just kind of laying in here rather than being fastened down quite as I would have anticipated. I'm not sure whether this is factory this piece of tape, or whether somebody stuck it on from the outside. And uh, and then there's this bit that fell out. Oh, that's the battery instructions. Okay, all right, well, that makes sense. So we can pop those back in. Uh, printed circuit assembly. All kind of lifts out as one. We have the LCD display on the front. So down here we have a couple of capacitors, uh, one transistor, Oh, actually, it's not transistor because it's got four legs. And then uh, our micro, what I assume is our microprocessor and um, some more kind of uh, resistors and another cap. Caps don't seem to be bulging or anything. Everything seems to be working, so I'm not going to try and mess with that. I don't know what's behind here, what the purpose of that is. Um, maybe just a shielding. Looks like it would be the back of the microprocessor. Uh, maybe that's just for EMC protection. And the display itself uh, tucked away under this plastic screen. Uh, all looks pretty straightforward, apart from perhaps this connector, which is a little bit strange. I'm not quite sure how that uh, how that fitted together. So it might take me a minute just to work that out. There doesn't seem to be a, any easy way of reassembling this. If you do it from the top, it, it seems to want to go from the bottom. If you do it from the bottom, it seems to want to go from the top. Um, I think probably this was how it was done originally. Here's the back. And in fact, yeah, that, that really does feel like that is the way to assemble it. Hopefully I don't trap any wires or anything in the process. Okay, well, have I got this all back together now? No, it still feels a bit kind of chunky. It's like pivoting on something there, so I'll be lifting that up again to see what's in there. This side seems all right. Probably just got a, a wire trapped. Yep, I do a wire trap there. Uh, just the on-off switch is trapped around the, the screw boss so we'll push that out of the way we'll push them out of the way at the other side again and we'll try again to put it back together it needs to be lifted off the bench because if it's not then this pushes forward all right i think that's it let's put some screws back in it quickly before anything else goes wrong Oh, that looks like it would be important, doesn't it? Okay. And it looks like also it goes in uh, before everything else. When you slide in a game, it goes like this. 
and then releases rather than going against the grain. So my guess is that it goes in this way. It then actually connects to a similar kind of strip on the printed circuit assembly. If you can see that there on the printed, let's turn it around on the printed circuit assembly there uh, is a kind of edge connector style thing. And then this kind of sits in between the two. I don't want to fuss with this anymore because I really don't want it to to break in my hands here. And we'll pop it all back together. I'll pop a couple of screws in first. And we'll try it out one more time, just make sure I've got that connector in the wrong place or connector in the right place, I should say. Let's just try this. Let's hope it still works. Oh dear, it doesn't. It doesn't still work. That is uh, distinctly not good. So given that our partially working microvision now doesn't work at all, I decided that the orientation of the connector that had popped out when I first disassembled the unit was probably to blame. So I stripped it down, changed the connector orientation, reassembled it, and we rejoined the video at that point. All right, power off, game in. Are on. No. Nope, nothing. Well, that didn't go very well. So I decided to take the unit apart again. And as I did so, another piece of plastic fell out. This is the stop for the paddle controller, which stops the user twisting the potentiometer too far in either direction. It's not the reason why the unit didn't turn on. It's just another problem that we need to fix. All right, so I decided I did need to super glue this piece in place. Fortunately, the battery went out of my camera, so I've just put a little bit of super glue on there. I actually put quite a lot of super glue on there. I've got it all over my fingers, uh, but after a lot of fussing, it seems to be in roughly the right spot. So I'm gonna leave that to dry, and I'm probably gonna return to this in the morning when I've had an opportunity to get some sleep. Hopefully this isn't stuck down. So maybe while we're trying to wait for that to dry, we should take a little look inside of this game cart. You know, I don't know why, after the complexities of the game itself, why I'd be foolish enough to open this, but let's see. If it doesn't come away fairly simply, then I'm not going to persevere with it. But it did come away simply. There's a little spring-loaded mechanism. And let's just lift that gently out of the way. Here's our game cart. It's marked Milton Bradley Electronics. And I'll show you the markings on that. Hopefully it will focus. You can see the markings on there. I'm going to leave that out for the time being. Because you know what? I might just, since I've come this far, uh, I might retro bright this. I say retro bright. Well, let's face it, you're bleaching it. And if it's a nice day tomorrow, I might bleach this. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, if it's not a nice day, I might not. Uh, but let's give that a clean. Cream peroxide formulated to improve mixability, this superior cream developer makes applications smoother and improve product texture. So that's the one I'm using. I'm sure there are plenty of others. This is just what I bought and I don't know how much I'm going to need. I've got an old paintbrush, a little pot here, and I'm just gonna put that all over really. Okay, so 12 hours have now passed and it's time for me to unwrap this. I'm going to wash it off under the tap and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so here it is and uh, rinsed off and it came out okay. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, it didn't have a lot of, well, there was no sun today. It was just daylight. Um, but uh, and there's still a little bit of yellowing here and there. Could probably have done with a little bit longer. But there we go. Okay, so the good news is I uh, also glued this together, 
It stuck together pretty well. The plastic's a bit brittle, but I think it's going to hold together at least for a good while. So our microvision might look better now, but we still haven't got to the bottom of why, after I'd taken it to pieces, it stopped working. We're about to solve that mystery now. Yes, it seems I've managed to damage the connector. I don't know how I didn't notice this the first time, but some of those pins are definitely bent in the wrong direction. Fortunately, I was able to bend them back without them snapping off. I'm not going to bend them too much because I don't want to have metal fatigue in them, but hopefully they'll stay in place. Let's try again and reassemble the game. Boy, I'm really hoping this is it. And indeed it is. Ha ha, success at last. Now from a viewing perspective, this contrast is quite significant. From a, uh, a shallow angle, you really need to turn the contrast right down. All right, so all, even with the contrast all the way down, it's quite playable at an angle. And, uh, and it's not too bad head on. Imagine in bright sunlight, it's, it's not perfect, but overall, that's not too bad. Oh, well, that feels a lot better. And I think the important thing is to keep these screws nice and tight because it is reliant on that kind of um, two-piece edge connector there to hold everything together. So we'll go ahead and finish the cleanup on this and then we'll have one more play at it um, before we uh, decide its fate. All right, now when I tried this before, this was a bit loose in here, if that's still going to be the case. Yeah, it just wants to fall off. I don't know why. There was a metal clip on there at some point. Looks like maybe there was a metal clip. Maybe I've lost that. Let me just have a look around the bench, see if I can see that. Otherwise, uh, we might need to do something different. Okay, so I wasn't able to find a clip. Um, so they've got a couple of things. I could just put a little bit of hot melt in there just to kind of hold that in place. Um, but I think what I'm going to try and do is just maybe put some electrical tape around here just to increase the friction a little bit and then we can still get it off if we need to. So let me try and do that. This is pretty thin electrical tape. I got it from the pound shop, I think. So let's uh, just take a little piece of that and we're going to twist it around the shaft here. See if it tightens it up enough to hold the knob in place. So, I'll just put a little electrical tape over that and we'll see if it will still fit. And if we do, if it's tight. Uh, perhaps just a little too tight. So, we'll just trim some of that off. Let's try that. Perfect. Does it still work? Yes. We are good to go. We're about there. Just maybe a little bit of double-sided tape on the back of here to hold this in place. Okay, so I just stuck the label back on with a little bit of double-sided tape there. And that's a lot neater now. It's less likely to get caught. It's starting to take shape now, it's starting to look a bit clean, a little bit cleaner and a bit more presentable. Still, it's never going to be great, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, I think maybe just a quick furniture polish and then we'll have a quick game. Okay, so here it is. Ready to go. Let's turn it on. And I think this is, uh, I, oh, that doesn't work. Doesn't seem to be working. Uh-oh. Oh, for goodness sake. Let's try it one more time. Power on, power on works. This is supposed to select the paddle size. Oh, Two double, well, the paddle size select seems to work. That's good. F 
fast or slow seems to work, but... Oh yeah, it does. It just needs a good push. That's a harder push than I would like. Yeah, much harder push than I would like. These are requiring a much harder push than I think is, is, is appropriate. knob off again. Okay, so why is this not working? Well, I'm not sure. So there is a little bit of a break in the membrane there, but I don't think that's significant. So what should happen is that when you press down, it kind of breaks these contacts and these two pieces connect. I really don't know what's hard about that. Maybe I can just clean some of these contacts off. They did all work when you pressed hard enough. Um, let me just show you this a second. I don't know if you can see it, but this whole plastic piece now is starting to split and it's just cracked kind of all the way along there. I'm going to try and stick some capped on tape over it. It's really only the tracks that are holding it together just to give it some extra rigidity. I don't know how well it's going to work. Uh, I like the caps on tape. It's thin, you know, it, so it doesn't tend to, uh, to be too intrusive on things. Uh, I do want to check, see if there's continuity over this crack. So what we're trying to ascertain is um, whether that joint there is still good. So first of all, let's check the meter. That's in shot on voltage on a resistance. Shows conductivity there. But not there, huh? No. From this one. But no, from this one. But no, from this one. But no. So in fact, it looks like we have lost continuity across this junction on the keypad. Okay, so this is a silver conductive pen. What I'm going to try and do now is just put a little dab on each of these tracks to see if I can restore the conductivity. I could do is putting something kind of firm behind it. Maybe we use this plastic piece that's been troubling us all this time. Okay, so let's see if that has restored the conductivity on this one track. Seems to have. Let's see if we can make it work its magic on the others too. So I have a couple of theories about what's been going on with our game. My first theory is that the flexible printed circuit assembler which forms the keypad was damaged when I unfolded it to inspect what was going on. My second theory is that the plastic had already started to crack and that the intermittent operation of the game, which we'd seen earlier on in the video, was a result of the failing electrical tracks across that folded piece of plastic. The reality might be somewhere in between. But if you agree, disagree or have your own theories, please leave a comment in the comments section. I'm also going to take this opportunity to make a blatant call for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. And if you're enjoying the video, please like and share. Now let's return to our repair. Put a good coating on and then we'll go in and clean up between them in a second. Okay. So now we have that in place, we're going to try and clean up between them with a tiny little screwdriver. That's 
one. That's two. And the third one here. So let's see if we now have conductivity across all of these junctions. From here to here. And then that one from here to here. Yes. In fact, I might dry that off with a little hot air. Let me do that. All right. Maybe that will be protected now. I'm going to try and uh, beef this up with a little electrical tape. Maybe it'll approve it cosmetically as well. Uh, let's try to turn it on again. So then, again, with a firm press, we can change through the number of lives. With a slightly less firm press, as we said, we can change between a double and a treble, and then we can go between fast and slow, and all that seems to work. That firmness, I think, might be to do with this pad here, because when I looked at some of the other examples online, if I take this off, uh, they had like a foam pad here, which seems a bit more resilient than this pad. I think somebody has lost the pad on this, it's come away or it's perished, and they've put just a piece of kind of black tape on, and that's probably why it needs a push that's a, a little bit more than you would ordinarily be expected to, to apply, because I think this is probably a little stiffer than usual. Of course, I don't have another one of these to compare, so I can't confirm that. Uh, fortunately, the gameplay on this particular game is via the potentiometer here, so once you're into the game, the, the, if there is a lack of responsiveness in these keypads, it's slightly less important, but it might be more important on a different game but I don't have a different game to try it on. Uh, so let's give it a go. So if you've made it this far, I admire your patience and your loyalty. Ultimately, this game didn't end up being added to my collection. It was sold back on eBay, advertised as spares or repair, but with perhaps more hope of finding its way into the hands of somebody who can appreciate it and enjoy it than it had before I attempted to fix it. We got a little bit more life out of it, but I think ultimately the plastics had just become so brittle with age that any repair was only going to be a temporary one. So that about wraps it up for today. Thanks again for making it this far, and until next time, Thank you so much for watching Retro Tech Repair. Hi, that's what's inside here. That could be a problem. Just with, uh, the joystick works as it should. Great. Grand Stand Scramble, wonderful, looking forward to fixing that.